windows. Sometimes you make it so hard to love you. You do something cool like make a nice revamp of your task manager. You finally give us some tabs in our file explorer. And yet, we suffer. System performance, you know, that's it's just something we have to give up sometimes when we give a newer system. It happens everywhere, right? But we can fix it. And I think in the future, if you're watching this years from now, I think this will be pretty much gone uh, because it's such a bad thing to go over. Now, obviously in this system, File Explorer, or as it's named now, Windows Explorer, is not taking up 20%. On my inside Nook machine, it's a different story. Not only is it taking up 20% like the thumbnail shows, it actually, when it launches multiple instances, will take up to 100% of the CPU. And this is some underlying issues with some of the newer updates. And it's only like out of the four systems that have Windows 11, 22H2, I've only seen it on one. So hopefully you don't fall into this one or 25% category that I'm shooting at right now. But if you do, I also want to touch on how to fix it. Also, if you don't, these tweaks will help speed up your Windows 11 experience as these registry entries I'm about to show are a little bit crazy. Like, I, I bet you don't even know these things when it comes to widgets and some of the pre-launching that happens of Windows apps. So it sucks system resources for something that you're probably not even using. So let's get on the desktop and get into it. So there's two registry entries I wanna show you today. And it's these preload or app preloads I talked about in the intro about pre-launching and preloading certain things. Now, DSH is uh, believed to be the, the widget section of this. Input is like this input experience where Microsoft sometimes logs your keystrokes and it's meant to improve typing experience or something. I think it's mainly used for voice to speech uh, or speech to text. And, and that's kind of what these two things do. Most people don't use either the widgets or the, the text to speech or voice to text. Uh, eventually I'll get that right. But let's dive in. Before I just have you blindly run like a reg file, I want to show you what this looks like in actual registry and the default settings. So I like to just go run regedit and this pulls it up. Now be very careful with regedit. Don't just blindly go delete and stuff. It's going to cause problems. So let's start with current user and then just come to software uh, and then usually Microsoft and then uh, if we just push I, you can actually kind of skip around. That's how I'm able to do stuff in registry so quickly and input. Chances are you may not even see this registry value, but if you do and it is one, it's enabled and it's launching and it, it can be problematic. I highly recommend just putting a zero here and adding the registry entry if it doesn't exist because it'll force, if it does get enabled, it's not just automatically launching every time you start your machine, sucking up a little bit of resources. And then uh, let's go into the next section, which if we go into Windows, I think it's Windows current version, and then DSH. You'll have this is pre-launch enabled. Now this will be a one. On every system, every single Windows 11 install, I have yet to see widgets not pre-launch. And that's just super annoying because I always disable widgets through settings and I always have it off. I don't know why Microsoft pre launches something that I don't use, but I don't appreciate it. That's not, not good guy, Microsoft. That's, that's bad. <laughs> We're going to leave that off. We're going to change this setting to zero, but let's, let's just say that this was all like this. Let's, let's change these settings. And then I'm going to just add this right here. This, this is a reg file. We're going to create a new registry file and just open up a blank notepad and paste it in. We're just gonna go file, save as prelaunch.reg. There we go. So we have our reg file. We look at our registry. You see it's a one here. We launch the pre file, just hit yes. Come back into our registry, it's set to zero. And if we check down here for the DSH key, you'll notice it is zero here. We can now reboot and we don't have to worry about that pre-launch. You'll notice uh, this process, uh, CPU usage might come down a little bit because it's no longer pre-launching these things or using up either memory or CPU. It's not much, but every little bit helps. So this is a tweak I might make sometime in 2023, but this still doesn't address 
the elephant in the room about that that nook inside that is having those issues that is causing Explorer to kind of spin out of control. And this is where you need to start culling things down. It's almost like a game of whack-a-mole of what's installed in your system. Is it could be a driver, it could be just a whole multitude of things. And I'm going to tell you what it is. I was using uh, an older version of, or actually it was the newest version of Wallpaper Engine, but with 22H2 for some odd reason, with my hardware configuration and that program running in the background, it was causing Explorer to really balloon up in size. So I ended up just uninstalling it. Now, if you're wanting to uninstall programs or just kind of see what's on your system, come into run, do the appwiz.cpl. This is the old version of uninstalling programs, but I like it a lot better than the newer version. Uh, as I'm able to come through here, easily sift through the programs I want. And if it's something that I'm not going to use, you know, I can just right click it and just hit uninstall. But let's say Rust. I don't really program in Rust. Wish I did, but I don't. And we're going to uninstall that and just go through and kind of clean up these things in the back of your system. It's really important to clean out these old utilities. If you can update the utility, do that, especially if you're going to be on the bleeding edge. I always say in business that. When it comes to changing out your system or, or updating it to the latest version, don't ever do it. Always wait, because a lot of times you might run into a program incompatibility that can cause a runaway service that can really, you can suffer massive performance loss because that older program just didn't jive with some of the newer settings that happens in Windows. So anytime in a business environment, any IT person worth anything is not going to just update to the latest and greatest blindly before checking compatibility with their existing program set. And that's one big thing that we can learn from home users is make sure we're not going to the latest version if we don't have to, if these some of these settings just look cool, like I was like, oh, new task manager and new tabs, that's amazing. Of course I'm gonna update. That'll make a great YouTube video. But I didn't anticipate some of these errors and that's why we wait. Uh, that's why a lot of people are still on Windows 10, and that's okay. I say stay on Windows 10 for at least another year or two if you really want a stable and reliable environment, as Windows 11 still has some bugs. So with that program uninstalled, we can see, you know, nothing really changed too much on this side because this is already a pretty clean system. I don't really do anything on it except gaming. But if I did, I would change these things out anyways. And let me know these changes to registry on the pre-launch commands. Does that make any effect on your system? It's going to be very minor, if anything, but it's something that we need to be cognizant of. Some of these added things, this was an added uh, thing I've never seen Microsoft do with the pre-launching, but interesting to see this new development. And I'm going to just keep watching Windows 11 and still be tinkering around in it and, and trying to get the most performance out of it because I do like its graphics. I still think the UI team did a great job. And with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.